Alrighty guys, I am going to take you through some of this LS wiring. Woes and scary, oh my god, wires are scary and that's the reason why I don't want to LS swap it because all the wires. And you know what, you're right to a point. This right here is a wire harness out of a 2006 GTO. So this is a with a manual transmission. It doesn't even have a transmission controller and all that stuff. But all of this right here is from that GTO hydro. That is check that out. Yeah, that is scary. Yep, you're right. It is. This is how they do it from the factory, the trucks. The GTO, they are similar. They is, it is part of your fuse and junction box and everything right there. This is how many wires are running into your motor and transmission and inside the car. That is scary as can be. How are you going to get all that together and make it run? There's a lot of different options actually. So one of the options... You can bring your harness in right here like this to someone like, this is uh, done by Bauer Performance in uh, Northern Minnesota. Actually did this one for me. And, uh, and he takes that scary harness like that, clips everything off of it that you don't need and just puts you together a harness of just something that is a standalone harness that runs your motor. And he sends you back a printout and everything like this as well of what, what goes where and everything. So it's really well organized. And, and basically all of this stuff right here. So when you separate it all out, and he doesn't wrap it or put the loom on it or anything like that, and uh, and there's a good reason why as well, because that way you can kind of customize your lengths of how you want it to lay into place, and, uh, and where you want to route your wires and everything, so you can kind of lay it all out first, and but basically... This is how it separates out a little bit right here. So this one right here is for an automatic transmission. So this great big plug right here is for your tranny. This is set up for a 4L60 because it has two speed sensors. So if your transmission uh, uh, wiring down below for your your tranny, your speed sensors, your temp sensors are all right here. Your ground wires, your O2 sensors, and that goes down underneath one side. And the other side separates your bank one and bank two. So these are all injector wires right here. There should be a fourth one in here somewhere. Um, but, oh, there it is. So I got four injector wires. This is gonna be bank one, bank two right here. So the way that it lays out, you can get these customized, put into a spot that you want them to be, and then start clipping them, shortening them up, taping them all up if you want to. And what I like to use is, instead of this plastic convoluted tubing right here, when you see this right here, the size of the wires right here, well, if you try to get all that in a plastic convoluted tubing, it ends up, look at how much extra room is in here. So great, you can fish other wires through and everything, but it makes the harness big, bulky, and ugly in my opinion completely. I love to use this stuff as a split wire loom that has a cloth type of, and it, it is actually coiled up so you can put that around quite a bit bigger wire and it wraps itself around there and tucks in a wire so now it looks nice and neat and clean and is way smaller and neater and everything and then what i use is hockey tape around it which has got a matte finish to it cloth and everything and it matches this stuff really well 
Amazon or eBay or whatever for your split loom uh, wire covers like that where I'll use that to cover all this stuff up as well and they make it in all different sizes like this stuff here you know is one inch on the inside right here but it'll open up to almost two that that you could have a wire harness that's almost double that and when you cinch it all up and tighten it up it's like a Chinese finger trap where it kind of folds around it and now you can bring it all the way down to an inch although you got a bundle of wires in there like that so I love this stuff right here it's not cheap but it really makes the harnesses look really awesome and clean and neat and so you can send your harnesses out like this to get if you already have a harness I would probably recommend doing it on this uh, on this way and um, the part that everybody freaks out about is like well what do I have to tie in this is literally all you have to tie in this is a fuse box that uh, is uh, marked I don't have the fuses in here but uh, fuel pump relay fuel pump relay and uh, this is all you have to hook up is your power wire your ground wire your tack wire and uh, fuel pump relay wire right there you hook those four wires up this motor is ready to fire up and, uh, and then these other wires are gonna be for uh, engine check light and uh, let's see brake switch because that is can controls your torque converter lockup that's for your tack and fuel pump one or fan one fan one fan two so that controls your electric fans your relays for that and uh that's it that's all you have to hook up to literally all the rest of these plugs are only going to plug into one place the only thing that you can get mixed up is bank one and bank two so that's uh, as long as you go through the instructions make sure you have bank one and bank two on the right sides and uh, everything just lays into place and you can just put everything in place and plug it in it's not scary at all people it's just crazy but I want to show you one other option here and this is a BP automotive completely aftermarket if you don't have a harness already I wouldn't go scouting around at a junkyard to find a used harness that you're gonna pay you know $150 for the harness and the ECU for what I would do is go to BP automotive for example and there's quite a few aftermarket companies out there spear tech is one of them uh, PSI is another one BP automotive I've done quite a few BP automotive harnesses and you can get them and this is what I'm talking about that convoluted tubing stuff I hate this stuff and uh, and I will never order another harness with it on there ever again but just up until a couple years ago this was the only thing that you could get right here and uh, this stuff is just so much nicer right here like this big giant one right here could end up fitting in one that looks like that instead and it's half the size you don't have to make such a big hole through your firewall and everything for it too you can order these BP harnesses with uh, I think they call it show loom and that comes with this style loom on it and stuff as well and it doesn't have this plastic convoluted stuff but this is what you would get from BP Automotive like this by this all this stuff just plugs into one place once you get it on top of the motor and you separate your bank one bank two on it it just literally lays almost in place where the coil pack wiring just is right here the injector wiring another injector another injector and super easy so this would be going through the firewall right here and uh, and you can run the harnesses a lot of people run them in the motor bay and stuff which I absolutely despise um, because I like my stuff neat clean 
and I don't want all the extra clutter. I don't want all of this stuff in the motor bay and stuff as well. If I can hide that under the dash, it's just a better place for it. So um, this one right here is your OBD2 port right here. So this is your diagnostic port. This would mount underneath your dash. You would hook up your computer to that to tune it or whatever. But look at this this loom that I'm talking about right here. That's three quarters of an inch. Look at what it's hiding. These wires right here. So you get rid of this ugly loom right here. We could have this on there instead. So now you got a wire like that instead of that. So much, much better option in my book. So either spend the extra money for the show loom. Don't get this plastic loom stuff. It just looks like an old trailer that way. And it just, it's terrible. I hate it. Won't use it again. And, uh, but this the, is what goes inside of the car right here. So what do you have to hook up? Barely anything. These are the only wires. And uh, unfortunately, I left the diagram in the other box uh, also. But super easy. And there's only a couple wires. You have your power your tack, your uh, uh, fan relays that can come through your firewall and uh, go to your electric fan relays, or if you mount your relays underneath the uh, the uh, uh, dash, then you all your wires are right there. So there's only a couple wires you have to hook up underneath your dash, and you're ready to run this motor. So that's it. So. It's not nearly as scary as you think, and there's way more options out there than, uh, than you think also. So if you have a harness, you can definitely send it out. But honestly, by the time, if you don't have one local to you that redoes uh, harnesses and stuff, by the time you end up uh, shipping it to somebody in a box like that, that it's going to cost $50 to ship that thing somewhere. And by the time you ship it there, he ships you a box that's half the size that comes back in, half the weight and everything. So it costs you another 25 bucks to ship it back to you. Plus the, I think the, what he, Bauer charges is uh, $350, I believe. So by the time you bought your harness, paid for the shipping there and back, and got your harness back and it looks like this and you still got to buy all the loom and everything for it you're better off just buying a aftermarket harness like this from vp automotive in the first place if you have it that's a great option to have it reworked if you don't have it i would definitely just buy an aftermarket harness and done and uh, that's the way i would go about doing that and uh I wouldn't worry, and I would sell my factory harness. A lot of times, like with the factory harness, like with that one, I'll sell that harness. I won't even use it. <coughs> it's just got too much stuff tied into it. And then also all the under dash wiring is also in that harness. So that harness is going to be more valuable to somebody buying that whole harness that had their car had a fire or whatever in. And, uh, and they need a and they need a harness so i'll be able to sell that harness probably for what i can buy the new aftermarket harness for so there's some of your options with the wiring and stuff on them it's really not scary once you do one of these things it's super super simple so we're going to take you through buttoning this up inside of the cutlass and everything and i'll kind of show you how simple it actually is once you start laying the wires on the motor and stuff and then we'll show you mounting the ecu and how we're doing the termination so i know i just did a little brief overview i didn't have the harness wiring uh diagram and stuff for these right now uh, because this was actually out of another car before that this was in and uh i just using this as a demonstration purposes to show you some different options that you can do for these harnesses to take the scary away from it so it's not bad at all people 
So don't even think about putting that stinking carburetor on your car because you're scared of the fuel injection wiring and the harness and everything. It is not bad at all. Super easy to do. And uh, it is not scary. It's not hard. You're not going to get it backwards. You're not going to hook something up wrong. And it's super simple to just make an LS run the way that it was designed to run with electronic fuel injection and no carburetor. So get that out of your head. Don't put a carburetor on it. Make these motors awesome again using the way that they're intended to fuel injected. Don't forget to like this video. Click like, throw me a comment, let me know what you think. Ring the bell for those notifications when I get a new video. We got lots more coming up, guys. A lot of cool stuff coming up. I hope you guys are enjoying the ride.